Friday seminar. Wet sanding is so related to and so close to polishing that you can't do one without the other, okay? You have to understand that when you sand something, you need to see what it looks like when you polish it, okay? Step one is always inspection, okay? So you can check and look for imperfections and you wanna mark every last one of them. And it's important, we're looking for high spots and low spots, okay? Um, what we do is we fill in the holes and we circle around the highs, all right? We're filling in the lows so when you sand, you'll know if you've gone low enough. And the highs, you go around them so you can tell if you've gone low enough and that you've eliminated it. So you'll see as we start sanding things that they will disappear. So I can come onto this slat and search for any highs or lows or runs. <clears throat> yeah, what are the different things we're looking for? Um, <clears throat> highs, lows, holes, runs. Um, <clears throat> we see the white funk. Um, which is adhesion problems. That's adhesion between your clear coat and the layer below, or adhesion from the clear to the carbon. And you'll see lifting between the layers, okay. and it's white. We can look for dryness, uh, dieback. You need to look and make sure, is this a good enough part to be wet sanding? If not, send it back. A zone, <clears throat> it's right in front of your face. You can see it all the time when it's on the car. It's visual, you can't miss it, okay? A is very visual. B zone, you could say would be each of these tabs would be, and maybe back here, as this goes on the car, on the hood of the car, this is what you see. And all of this around the edge goes underneath the car. You can't see it installed on the car, so this is all C zone, all the way around, okay? So A, B, C, okay? D zone, no one ever sees it. Customer never sees it, <clears throat> doesn't matter at all because no one will see it. So long as it's not a fail because it's not infused right or cracked, um, it's okay to have weave distortion holes, doesn't matter, no one's gonna see it. Once we've finished inspecting the part, we are going to DA sand the entire area with 1500, which is going to show any additional imperfections and we'll try to eliminate the ones we've circled at this point. And ideally, we don't use hand sandpaper. No, no quiero dejar de mano por todas las piezas cuando es posible. Solo con DA. The goal is just DA. Inevitably, we will have to come back and hand sand a little bit, okay? We really only will touch A zones and B zones if they've got real bad issues like runs or large holes, um, but mostly spend your time on A, 90% on A, 10% on B, okay? 1500 Trizac pads. It is important to make sure that you have a good pad and that you're not causing scratches with the pad. This has chip outs and issues on it. We call it wet sanding because we're using water, right? It's very important that the sanding is done with wet paper as well as a wet part. I like to go as fast as possible. Muy rápido. Means less time standing here sanding, okay? So there's slow. That's not doing anything wasting your time full speed all the way okay that's the sound I want to hear walking through here okay that's the sound only reason to slow down would be if you're using going into some small corner but even that you shouldn't be using a DA for. This should be for all the big flat surfaces. If you're going into a corner, that might be where you use the hand sandpaper. Now, the most important thing, a 
about wet sanding is cleaning, okay? Every time you lift off of here, you clean, okay? So. I'm watching the Sharpie mark. Watching the Sharpie marks disappear, and as soon as I lift up, we clean both the paper and the part. If you don't do that, you are going to get pigtails and scratches, and you're just going to be chasing your tail all day long, okay? This did is 80% of the work we're done with on this section. Doesn't take much. We can wipe it off, or put it in the dryer. And we can look at the part now that it has been sanded, roughed with 1500. And then with our silver Sharpie again, we can inspect it. But, and we are staying off the edges. Edges are where you burn through. So don't touch the edges, the sharp corners. Don't touch those, okay? We can do that by hand or we can just leave it and not touch it at all. And now we can inspect it again. And we're looking for <clears throat> shiny spots along the dull. So I can see there's a little bit shiny there still. So I need to go a little more there. There's a dot a little high. I need to go more there. <clears throat> the edge has a little bit of extra clear. So you get a line. We could go a little bit more on that edge if we wanted to but the rest of it is basically done. We're looking for orange peel. You can see a little bit next to the edge up here. And you wanna make sure it's making a white sand residue. It needs to be white. <clears throat> that means you're actually doing something, okay? If it's not, your paper's dull. So I'm gonna do 1500 one more time. And I'm gonna to touch up those last little areas. I might get a little closer to the edges just to clean them up a tiny bit. <clears throat> but then this should be done with 1500. So again, you can also see water sticks where you've sanded, and it doesn't stick where you haven't sanded. So that's a good indicator as to areas that have been sanded enough. So watch where the water sticks, okay? So I'm gonna finish off this edge. Sharpie left there. I just went after it again. That's done. And we're flat, right? Flat. Do not be sanding on edge. No edge sanding, okay? We're flat. We don't want to dig ripples into the part, okay? Even if it feels faster, we're flat, okay? Very important. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand sand just so we can get some hand sanding practice as well for areas like this couple highs on here that need to come out and we're not going to DA sand that right that's not possible try to avoid uh, touching any of the edges it's where you're more likely to burn through quemadas and los bordes some problemas wet sanding paper needs to be soaked in water before you use it ideally it's starting to curl up like this is a good indicator that you've got paper looking good and there's 1200 uh, and 1500. If we're gonna go straight to 1500, the only reason to go to 1200 will be if we had bigger issues to fix, like runs on the part, okay? Now you want it to be soaked because it actually softens the paper uh, so that it's not too aggressive. Um, it's a lot gentler. You're not gonna actually catch an edge and scratch your part because it's now sort of soft, okay? So you want nice soft paper. And it's been sitting in here. There's a lot of shit inside of this water, lots of grit and other stuff. So you pull paper out of there, you need to make sure this gets cleaned off. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of grit from that water getting onto your part while you're sanding, okay? So clean your paper well, even straight out of there, even though it's a fresh piece of paper. You want it looking nice and clean. 
and nice and soft, okay? It's not wetted out paper, okay? For an edge where it's everything's curving, there's actually probably not gonna be much use for your sanding block here. We can maybe sand this face a little bit, um, but for the rolled edges, we're probably just gonna go by hand on it. But if you do use a sanding block, you also need to clean your sanding block. This was just last used for 180 grit, so it was sanding something aggressive. It means it's covered in 180 grit granules of carbon or dust of some sort. So if we, even putting this onto here, and there's a chunk of something, it's gonna stick through here, and you're gonna scratch your part, okay? So clean everything. I'm just gonna do a couple passes through there. I have my one ugly spot that I've marked here. Again, I can sand on it. Looks like it disappeared pretty quick. This edge is nice enough that I can roll it, it feels like. So I can wipe it off and again, inspect and look for anything shiny left over. We can come in by hand gently to remove the last of the gloss in that area. And clean it off one last time. Okay. The best way to get rid of hand scratches is to use a DA, because the DA is going to sand across the grain and get rid of them this way. If you see you have DA scratches left behind, you want to hand sand it, because then you can go across all the grains to get rid of them, okay? 3,000 grit pads are little squishy foam pads. Okay, a couple passes very hard to burn through, very hard to overdo it with 3000. You're basically polishing the part with 3000. It's your first step of polish. Like we could have skipped this entirely and just started polishing, but this makes it a lot easier to polish, okay? So use the 3000, but it's almost like polish. Go over it a couple times. You can touch up the corners with it and just come in here and do a little hand scuff uh, follow up. Try not to catch any of the edges and damage the pad, but by hand, just doing a couple passes will be nice to clean up those areas. All right, again, you should be making sure there's no shiny spots left. It's squishy foam pad, so it's gonna clean up those edges nicely for you. It's gonna get into those lows, so it might not be perfectly blocked flat, but it's now gotten rid of any shine left behind. Uh, so again, it should be a very uniform, nice looking surface all the way across.